So our overall project goal was to provide equitable access um, to excellent arts education for every New York City student, and that's what got us excited, was because after years and years in New York City of um, arts education being absent, um, especially through the um, late 70s and early 80s, and and you know, and the passionate advocates like Nancy and and her husband Ira were, were teaching great, um, you know, great music programs in isolated schools. But some schools had no music teachers at all, no arts teachers at all. And so the the mayor and the chancellor said, no, we want to figure out equity across the system. And that was a very exciting and sort of revolutionary thought for us, from a system that had continually said we can't be bothered with the arts. So we were excited by that mm -hmm. that idea. Um, and our phase one goal was the document that we were talking about, this blueprint of, of, of benchmarks. Um, one of the interesting things that happened along the way um, with this discussion was that Nancy uh, got a call from the Chancellor and from the Division of Cultural Affairs in New York City saying, hey, guess what? It's not just music teachers that you need to involve. You need to involve the cultural Organizations. The cultural community, and then we, and so that was wow. Okay, so we had done a little bit of work, and now we had to pull back. And so, um, as director of music, I was the one responsible for for the music piece from the Department of Education, and I was asked to select somebody who would be my counterpart from the cultural community. And having worked with Tom many times before on collaborations, I asked Tom if he would be. Um, the kind of overseer of the work that the cultural community would do. And he at that time was the director of education for the New York Philharmonic. And he, while I brought in music educators from all grades and universities, he brought in his counterparts from, and teaching artists from the Metropolitan Opera Guild, Jazz at Lincoln Center, um, a, a whole bunch of Carnegie Hall, a whole bunch of um, cultural organizations in New York City and at the same time that, that we were doing this the visual arts people were doing the same thing there was a director of visual arts at the Bo Department of Ed and they brought in people from the Met F Metropolitan Museum of Art from the Museum of Modern Art from the Brooklyn Museum all and they w were collaborating together and so we were doing this at the same time let me just say as I think I mentioned I don't know if I mentioned it out loud um, at that time in 2000 Three to 2004, we did not yet have a director of drama and a director of dance at the Department of Ed. So we put a hold on that document and just worked that year on the music and art document. What you have, and we'll talk about that later, I asked Jose to just print out certain portions of the document, but the actual document itself is both um, blueprint for teaching and learning in the arts and it's both m music and visual arts together and we'll look don't look at it's a terrible thing that I should do as a teacher don't ever give you put things in the hands of your kids if you want them to listen because then they'll fidget and they won't <laughs> okay um, so to go on we um, we then as Nancy said we were interested in this idea of what do we want students to know and be able to do it was to give clarity to our work together and to also clarify the role of the cultural institutions. What were we to do with schools and how was that to work? And that was a lot of what we spent our time doing was ironing that out and, and, and also looking at the possibilities for how cultural organizations could work with the schools in a way that was um, complementary, um, that was enriching, and that was authentic. And that um, didn't supplant the role of the music teacher in the school. And, and supported the role yes, of the music exactly. teacher. Because our goal was, as I was, sorry, I brought the mic there. Uh, as I mentioned this morning in my question to Richard, right, is um, we were interested in the net result being more music teachers at the end of this process. We wanted more music teachers in more schools because that was part of the goal of equity and access across the system. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on our process, but just briefly, we had, you know, over, um, you'll see it, you know, over the, uh, the couple of years, um, we had a variety, of, um, a variety of things that we did, including forming committees, the writing team, just like, you know, Richard mentioned, um, here in Louisiana. Um, we had a whole writing and um, rewriting and editing stage um, that went on. Um, 
there was a lot of communication um, amongst our the, the different groups that worked together. We had um, a, a useful tension we found um, between getting feedback from larger groups and then going into sort of smaller um, closed door sessions with smaller committees to really hammer out um, ideas. And, and may I say that we did that uh, twice during the course of the first year. We called together a group of uh, music educators and art educators and we gave them the document at, at the stage that it was at at that point and asked them to look at it and provide feedback. And we, a lot of times we took it back and we rewrote because we, some of the things that the teacher said was very valid. Sometimes you get caught up when you're writing um, in not seeing the bigger picture and it's very important to give that to uh, somebody um, who's in the classroom every day and let them say, how does this work for you? So that's what we did. And let me, let me just go back and say that our, that, that our main um, discovery, if you will, sort of philosophical discovery, and the one that we're going to present to you today through an activity that we'll do together too, um, was that at the end of the day, we talked about all of the different the national standards, Richard, you mentioned this morning, and then the relationship to state standards and, and local standards. But our main discovery in trying to work out this particular formula between cultural organizations on my side and the schools on Nancy's side was that we had, we had two main things in common. One was that we wanted students to have a great musical education, um, rich in doing music and learning about music. And the second big one was that we had something in common, and that was the repertoire. Repertoire. Everybody, now, everybody needed the repertoire and used repertoire every day. I mean, it's the old, you know, it's the economy, stupid kind of thing. It's the repertoire, dummy. You know, <laughs> what do we have in common? What do we all really work on? Music teachers were working on repertoire in their classes, teaching songs, whether it was, you know, K to two teaching. Um, you know, songs through games and through interactive, uh, you know, through either Suzuki or through solfege or through, um, you know, Dalcros or Eurythmics or whatever it might be. Um, that was repertoire. The cultural institutions were presenting repertoire. We were thinking about repertoire in different ways. And so the question was, how could we work on repertoire together in a way that really complemented each other? And I guess that was really sort of our big discovery. Yeah, it was like the light bulb went on for everyone that was there and we said, we have to write this document through the repertoire. And so you'll see as we uh, work how that became uh, the driving force behind this and behind what we wrote. Yeah. Now, um, the, the idea of the, this blueprint is that um, there are a lot of things that happened. We've had a whole distribution phase in which we've printed this document, it's gone up online, um, schools have used it, we've had a professional development phase now, which you guys are getting ready to head into, with the idea that in the professional development that work will come out of it, um, and work has been coming out of it, that is very specific and lesson, um, classroom specific and lesson based. Um, and the, the idea of partnerships with the cultural organizations has also continued. And uh, in fact, there's even now, Nancy okay. was just sharing with me, even a newer iteration of the music blueprint that has recently been finished by um, the ongoing committees that have continued to work on this, just as, as a way of both amplifying and updating the work. So the document is in it's use. A, I would say what's really document. nice is that across the system, people know it. They know the document, they know what's in it, they are familiar with it, um, and they're still teaching in a very individual way, but with knowledge of the benchmarks. Right, so. right. And uh, now what they're doing, I just spoke to the person who succeeded me when I um, retired from that position and uh, she said, now she just showed me a document uh, just yesterday that was um, more. This kind of thing is a living document. In fact, for, for a while we were debating what kind of a, a format it should take. Maybe it should be in a loose leaf binder so that you can keep adding um, things to it. But, um, you know, politically, I guess, the mayor and the chancellor wanted something that was, um, looked great. 
So, and this looks great. So, but it's also very substantive, and um, you, we'll all get a chance to work with it and look at it later.